set up WinAVR, the portable version. This will include AVR sim if you're using my customizations here. First step, I want you to know day number four, those notes. Different. This also has WinAVR. What I'm describing here is better. First step is to download this zip file from our course documents page. Extract, uh, extract the zip to a location where you want these tools to live. Really matter. Uh, that's the whole idea of the portable thing. It is faster if you extract this to your local disk, but that's a bit pointless if you're on a lab computer. I did this to my H drive, and uh, you'll see that, but I just want you to know that doing this to your H drive is going to take approximately forever to unzip. Uh, I think it took seven minutes last set this up. All right, and then after we do that, run the shortcuts. See here, here's my zip file that I've downloaded. I've already extracted this. And, uh, when you extract this, I right-clicked, extract all, and this one, I actually deleted that because otherwise you'll get a folder within a folder. All right, already done with that. Create shortcuts, double-click. You may now move the shortcuts to a convenient location. Press any key. Here are five shortcuts. I'm going to cut these and then put them in the AVR folder. This is where all of my projects will be. Now it's empty. What's next? GAVR ASM is the assembler that's part of AVR Sim. It's a command line program, so we're not going to see it in a, in a shortcut. Next up, I'm going to copy assembly code. It's going to, going to be for AVR Sim. Copy that. Run AVR Sim. Okay. Make a new project. New. Called blink location. This is the first time you run AVR sim. You'll be app project directory. This is where I set my project directory. Not a big deal. I just need to navigate to B under car. A new folder to hold that one project. Blink. Go. Oh. Is okay, okay. Here we go. Control A, Control V. I already had it. Clipboard. Save. Saved it. Okay. Next up, we're just going to assemble this. Click assemble. It is assembled without errors. That's wonderful. Take a look, a uh, quick look at what assembly does. This includes symbols. Last videos we made, this was hex 17, this was hex 18. Now we have DDRB and port B. I'd much rather look at this. These are, this defines all of the symbols that you find in the data sheet. And it would be port B, DDRB, for using right but they are what you would expect because they are directly from the data sheet. Code segment, start our uh, address counter at zero, put, drop a label at address zero called setup. And we're gonna set uh, bit number three, or bit three, which is uh, starting from zero. That's PB3, that's an output. And we're gonna blink it. Set that pin high, we set the pin low. Set and clear it, clear is the same thing. Zero. Jump back to main, so we set it high, set it low, set it high, set it low. Exciting. Assembled it already. Good measure. All right, so we're done assembling. Let's go back to see what this is. So assemble this, run the simulation. Sure. That. Here's the simulation. Those look. Okay on the ports 
messing with them. Our first instruction that's about to be executed is SBI DD. Set that program counter goes up by one. We've done one instruction, but our time has gone up by two microseconds. That's because SBI takes two cycles. To DDRB goes to a one. Wonderful. Next step, uh, set port B to a one. That pin three, right now it says low. Yep, it says high. Easy peasy. Step one more time. It goes to a low. Next clock cycle, we're gonna jump back. We jump back, we set it to a high. We set it to a low, jump. All right, great. Now we're gonna upload our code with AVR dude. Best thing about how ABR dude works is if you have the hex file, you don't need anything else. However, you got the hex file, it does not matter. Right. Here we go. Start up the AVR command shell. This gives us a uh, command terminal, but it has our settings for it for ABR sim, including ABR dude. Don't see any error. We just what we want to see. Okay, awesome. Go back to my uh, website here. I'm going to copy this here. So if I look at this, DIR, you can see this directory here. That's where I want to go. So I'm going to change directory to link. I typed a BL tab, tab delete. Look at what's in here. We have blink.hex. Uh, they're added some uh, Unix style utilities or Linux utilities. So you can just say cat blink.hex. Cat just barfs it to the terminal. Quick way to look at a file, especially a short file. All right, next up, control V. Here's my AVR dude command. And uh, I have a programmer set up here. Check this out. Here we go. So here is a Nano. It's a Nano clone running the a, uh, Arduino as ISP sketch. Here is uh, the connections for this. These wires, uh, they just sneak underneath and I cut them custom. Took me a while to do, but now it's, uh, it's a nice programmer setup. These are just for the uh, oscilloscope with my every two. All right, and you can also see that I see. Uh, you can see that there's a resistor on pin B3, which is a physical pin number two, 100 ohm resistor to a green LED. I want to know what. Uh, Tom port this is because I never trust that the first guess is right. I open up the uh, device manager. See what it says. Okay, I'm not a admin right now. Go down to Tom ports. Tom ports. Oop. Uh, plug it in. Oh noise it refreshes here's our com our uh, ch340 usb to serial port really is on com3 great avr dude see this is our programmer this is the protocol that what is it the av uh, arduino is isp speaks at tiny 85 baud rate that's always fixed this here and then uppercase p com3 if i hit enter c blinky enter please yep nope. start to blink you flash it and it always says thank you so you need to look up a little bit higher okay up here flash was written written and uh it looked to be okay and you now notice that the led is in fact on Actually, it's blinking. It's just blinking really fast. Uh, that's it. So if, not it, 
there's a uh, bonus at the end. If you want to not type uh, this AVR or AVR dude command all of the time, I have uh, something awesome for you. Right. You can open Programmer's Notepad uh, just from this command window, PN. You can also double click on the shortcut. If we open up Programmer's Notepad, I'm going to save this file as a thing. Whenever I'm in my blink folder, make sure we're in the blink folder. Make a new file called make file. An uppercase M, lowercase I think. Okay, inside this make file, please place the following slash colon enter tab. Really important is that this tab really needs to be a tab character basis. Just how control V doesn't work. Go here, AVR dude. Copy. Make file. Paste. Here's the command. And uh, there we go. I'm going to save this. This file. Close. Well, check this out. If I say make flash. It runs AVR dude and programs my device. And I don't have to, no longer, I have to remember that. Uh, that if I go into my blink folder, you will see that I have a new file called make file. Look at this in Notepad. See what's going on. Uh, Notepad knows about this text also. We'll learn more about make files and how they work. For now, it's a great way to. Repeat commands if you don't want to remember them. One side note uh, to finish this up, flash is the very first, we call this a target, very first target in the file. That is the default target. So now I can just go to my command line. Instead of saying make flash, I can just say make runs the default one. Great. We're watching.